My Hotep brothers and sisters, welcome to another Sunday online in GIA Fellowship of the African Village and Cultural Center. I am Ray Hagens, founder, chief elder of the African Village, your friend, your brother, your teacher. And we're going to start off today with the song that I wrote entitled Objection Overruled. And what made me write this song was how sometimes, you know, God blesses you with so many things and people have a problem with it or things are going well in your life or, you know, whatever. Things just happen for you and people have a problem with it. And they say, well, how did that happen for that person or whatever? They're jealous or they're envious or, and they say, you know, I don't know how they could have did all that, you know, but I don't know, whatever. But hey, God says objection overruled. Okay, real simple. I decided to bless that person. Ain't nothing you can do about it. So let's get into it, okay? Yes. Let's get our blood flowing, right? Listen. I've been accused of oh so many things And I know that I've done wrong I had nowhere to turn and no place to go I couldn't even sing a song But his love reached deep into my heart And he took that guilt away But my enemy refused to see the change This is what he had to say Objection But love said Objection for Objection, but love said, objection overruled. Yeah, I know I don't deserve to have this joy I feel inside. When I think about the things that I have done, I want to run somewhere and hide. But that's when God's love shines down on me and with the truth he makes me clean. But my enemy don't like the change in me. Every day he screams. Yeah, yeah. But love said, objection overruled. My enemy saying, objection. Yeah. But love said, objection overruled. Listen. Now the peace of mind that I now have, I can hardly understand. I want to run and jump and sing and shout and boldly take my stand. I got a right to hold my head up high as I live life every day. My enemy just can't help herself. The only thing she can say, yeah, yeah, but love said, objection for Saying objection, but love said objection overruled. My enemies say objection, but love said objection overruled. Yeah, every day my enemies say objection. Oh yeah, 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 but love said. Let's take it from the top, okay? Listen, I've been accused of oh so many things, and yes, I have done wrong. I had nowhere to turn and no place to go. I couldn't even sing a song. But his love reached deep into my heart, and he took that guilt away. But my enemy refused to see the change, and this is what he had to say. Yeah, but love said, objection overruled. My enemy said, yeah, but love said, objection overruled. Listen, I know I don't deserve to have this joy I feel inside. When I think about the things that I have done, I want to run somewhere and hide. But that's when his love shines down on me. And with the truth, he makes me clean. But my enemy don't like the change in me. Every day he screams. Oh, but love said, objection. Oh, my enemy said, Oh, yeah, but love said, Yes. Listen, now the peace of mind that I now have, 
I can hardly understand. I want to run and jump and sing and shout and boldly take my stand. I got a right to hold my head up high as I live life every day. My enemy just can't help herself. The only thing she can say. Yeah, yeah, but love said. Oh, yeah. Every day my enemy said. But love said. continue by doing one more time, one more time. God allowed us to come together one more time, okay? What happened there? I get, hit the wrong button. Okay. Here we go. One more time. One more time. God allowed us to come together one more time. Everybody, come on. One more time. One more time. God allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time, God allowed us to come together, one more time, God allowed us to come together, one more time, one more time, God allowed us together one more time one more time one more time God allowed us to come together God allowed us yeah. to praise God's name to praise God's name God allowed us to come together to praise his name, to praise her name, to praise her name. God allowed us to come together. God allowed us, yeah. To sing our song. Sing our song, God allowed us to come together. Sing our song, to sing our song, to sing our song. God allowed us to come together. God allowed us, yeah. Now let's put those hands together. Come on. Clap our hands, clap our hands, God, I 
for granted you know uh hey man you know <laughs> there's so many people who started off yesterday but they're not here today or they went to bed last night and they're not here today okay but look at us man here we still are doing well you know all praises be to the mercy and grace of the most high you know for being so good and so kind in our lives and that's why i give god the praise every day you know, never let a day go by without giving the most high a thanksgiving. You understand? Okay. You know, I mean, there, there are people who would, would die to be in your shoes. Okay. Okay. But look at where we are, man. The blood running warm in our veins, activity of our limbs, as the old folk used to say. So what can we say but give God the praise and the glory? Well, let's do the oath to the ancestors at this time. Okay. So let's lift our voices together as we honor those who have gone before us and made it possible for us to be where we are, all right? So lift the voices with the brothers, lift your voices with the brothers and I as we lift our voices together and say the words. Say it like you mean it, come on everybody. Oh ancestors, blacker than a thousand midnights, African ancestors, it is to you that we, your children, give respect and honor. Oh, ancestors, we call upon you and welcome you in this place. African ancestors, let your presence fill this place. Yes. Oh, ancestors, who have been purposely excluded from the history books so that the world would not know of your greatness. Our African ancestors, who gave civilization to the world, our African ancestors who gave the arts to the world. Our African ancestors who gave music to the world. Our African ancestors who gave the sciences to the world. Our African ancestors who gave mathematics to the world. Our African ancestors who gave medicine to the world. Our African ancestors who gave the literature to the world. Yes. Our African ancestors who gave philosophy to the world. Our African ancestors who gave God consciousness to the world. Oh, ancestors, we thank you for devoting your life to make a future for us, your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Now stand with us, strengthen us, guide us, teach us, and protect us from the snare of our enemies. Rise up, O oh African ancestors, and let our enemies be scattered, and give us the wisdom and the boldness to deal with our oppressors and those who would hinder the liberation and empowerment of our people. Rise up, O oh African ancestors, and live in us, and we will not fail to honor you. We will not fail to respect you. 
we will not fail to hear you, and we will not betray you. And now, brothers and sisters, we want to take the time to honor just a few of the great Africans who have gone ahead of us. We call forth their great African names and honor them to Pharaohs Narma, Zoja, Sneferu, Khufu, Kafre, Menkare, and the great vizier and physician and multi genius Imhotep. We say, Ashe. Ashe. to Queen Natokris, Queen Sobek Neferu, Queen Ahotep, Queen Amos Nefertari, Queen oh, yeah. King Hatshepsut, Nefertiti, Queen T, and Queen Nefertari II. We say, Ashe. Ashe. To Menkep and Ra Tahuti Mays, known as Thutmosis III, Amenhotep III, Akhenaten, Tut Akhamen, Ursa Ma'at Ra, Setepen Ra, Rametsu Meriamen, Ramses II, Shabaka, Taharka, Hannibal, uh, yes, and the great the African, African warrior Shaka Zulu, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To all of the kings, queens, priests, and warriors of Nubia, Waset, Ethiopia, Kemet, Kenya, the Congo, Tanzania, Uganda, Central, South, and West Al Kibu land, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To the more than 600 million Africans oh, yes. whose lives were lost in the European invasions of yes. Africa and in the Middle Passage, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To the more than 300 million who have since lost their lives to racism and hate crimes, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To Harriet Tubman, Ashe. Frederick Douglass, Ashe. Mary McLeod Bethune, Ashe. Nat Turner, Ashe. Fannie Lou Hamer, Ashe. Sojourner Truth, Ashe. Carter G. Woodson, Ashe. Booker T. Washington, Ashe. Dr. Charles Drew, Ashe. Noble Drew Ali, Ashe. Benjamin Banneker, Ashe. George Washington Carver, Ashe. Bishop Richard Allen, Ashe. Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, Ashe. Howard Thurman, Ashe. Mother Mahalia Jackson, Ashe. the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garth, Ashe. Benjamin E. May, Ashe. Langston Hughes, Ashe. Medgar Evers, Ashe. Paul Robeson, Ashe. Dr. Martin Luther King, Ashe. Malcolm X, Thurgood Marshall, Ashe. Mother Clara Hale, Ashe. Adam Ashe. Clayton Powell, Ashe. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Ashe. Dr. Amos Wilson, Ashe. Dr. John Henry Clark, Ashe. Dr. John Jackson. G. Jackson, Ashe. Dr. Shikanta Diak, Dr. Dr. Chancellor Williams, Ashe. Dr. Dr. George Williams. G. M. James, Ashe. Patrice Lamoon, oh, yes. Kwame Torre, Kwame Nkrumah, Dr. Khalid Muhammad, Ashe. Dr. Yes. Jacob Carruthers, Ashe. Dr. Ashaka Musa Badashango, Brother Ray Charles, Ashe. to our mothers and fathers, Ashe. our grandmothers and grandfathers, Ashe. to our great grandmothers and great grandfathers, Ashe. our brothers and sisters, Ashe. sons and daughters. Ashe. Ashe aunts and uncles, Ashe. nieces, nephews, cousins, Ashe. and all those who have gone ahead of Ashe. us and have made their ancestral transition Ashe. to their life, deeds, legacy, and contributions, we say, Ashe. Ashe. again we say, Ashe. 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 again we say, Ashe. Ashe. Join in with us to sing this praise. We all should be one, 
and then the unbelievers will come. They will say, you are with us, yeah. Oh, yes. The love. The love, love. Which in the Arabic tongue, or in the English tongue, means God is great. And he's worthy to be praised. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to take this opportunity to those of you who just may have joined in late to say welcome to another Sunday online and Gia Fellowship of the African Village and Cultural Center. I am Ray Hagens. I am so glad you guys have made time out of your schedule to be with me today. And uh, it's a wonderful day, man. I mean, you know, what can I tell you? You know, here we are in spite of whatever is going on, you know, for those out there who are dealing with bereavement, our prayers are with you. Okay. Um, you know, uh, got a couple of calls this week on people who made their transition. And of course, it's, it's, there's no words that can ease the pain of the loss of a loved one, you know, but know this, okay, that the Most High will not put any more on you than you can bear. All right. So understand you might not. In fact, I take that back. You will not get over the loss of a loved one. Never. <laughs> it never happens. But trust me when I say this, even though you will not get over it, you will get through it. OK, take it from me, man. You know, I've sat in that seat. You know, and, and you don't get over the loss of a loved one. You don't get over the loss of losing your mother. You don't get over the loss of losing your father. You don't get over the loss of losing your best friend. But you do get through it. God will give you the mercy, the grace, the power, the strength, and the patience to get through it, okay? I don't know who I'm saying this to for right now, but trust me, you will get through it. Yeah, okay? To those of you who are brothers and sisters and members of the African villages, I honor you today, all of you guys, by saying ma'at hotep. All right, there's two words, ma'at hotep, meaning truth and peace be unto you. I trust you guys are doing well wherever you are today. Yeah, man, it's a wonderful thing to be alive, you know? It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> you know, I think about... Uh, my very dear friend, uh, Pastor James Kuykendall, there in Patterson, New Jersey, whenever we talk on the phone, one of the first things we say is, I'm alive. I'm alive. You know, both of us are COVID survivors, you know, and hey, man, we both at death's, death's door, as they say, you know, and so to be alive is a blessing and, and an honor, you know, don't take it for granted. That's why I sing the song one more time, one more time, God allowed us to come together one more time. So to all of you, brothers and sisters of the African village there in St. Louis, I honor you to the brothers and sisters of the African village of Youngstown, Ohio, which was the first birth that we gave, uh, first village we gave birth to, we honor you as well today, to the elders and brothers and sisters there, to the African village of uh, uh, Detroit, Michigan, the brothers and sisters there in Detroit, the brothers and sisters there in Chicago, we honor you today, to the brothers and sisters of the African village of New York City, we honor you guys today as well, uh, to the African village of Charleston, South Carolina, Oh, my goodness, to the African village of Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, man, to the uh, brothers and sisters down in the Virgin Islands there, okay? And the, um, uh, 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 how can I say, the British Virgin Islands and and uh, the, uh, the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. I'm trying to figure out how to say that, not American Virgin Islands, right? U.S. Virgin Islands. To our friends down in Guyana, South America to our brothers and sisters all around the country here in Florida and up in, up in Canada. Oh my goodness, out there in, in Oklahoma City. Oh man, you just honor every, two. out there on the West Coast, can't forget y'all, right? We honor all y'all today. It's just good to have you guys with me as always. Thank you for your presence and especially those of you here in the chat room. 
Thank you guys for being with me today. It's always good to have you guys here. I honor you for your loyalty. You guys don't miss a Sunday, man, you know? So that's a, that's one of the reasons why I'm compelled, you know, even, even when I don't feel like getting up, you know, because I know you guys are going to be here in the chat room, so faithful and loyal, you know, I'm, I'm compelled to just, I have to get up. I can't just leave y'all sitting here waiting on me, right? You know? Yeah, man. You know, so I'm just, hey, I just, I'm thankful for y'all. I'm grateful you guys have no idea uh, what you, your presence means to me. And I thank you for simply being who you are. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you for your donations every week to help us uh, keep uh, Black Liberation Webcasting Network on the air, you know, and to you know, service the brothers and sisters to the best of our ability. Thank you for doing that. You know, uh, we have a 24 hour a day, seven day a week broadcast that airs out and it is expensive. But because of your donations, we're able to keep that going. And, you know, I mean, you'd, you'd be surprised the testimonies we've gotten from people who, you know, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, you know, uh, as they say, the darkest part of the night is just before the day when they were at their lowest point, man, you know, and 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 they were able to log on to WBLR and find encouragement, find strength, you know, so it's worth it. And I'm thankful to the Most High and you, brothers and sisters, for helping us to maintain that, you know. I'm just excited about the opportunity to serve in ministry to free the minds of our people. The topic that we want to talk about today, and let's bring, let's get ready to go on and bring that up uh, now. Let me just add this to the stream here. And if you wish to enlarge your screen to do that, just feel free to go on and enlarge it so you can see uh, what I'm saying a lot better. Okay. Um, I've gotten a lot of messages or, or questions, you know, um, especially from people who have been under the influence of the Pentecostal movement. And let me say that again, because I said Pentecostal, and it's Pentecostal, okay? Uh, the people who have been under the, under the influence of the Pentecostal movement, who are confused, you know, they feel left out uh, because things are going on and they're not feeling a part of it because it's not happening to them. I, I get this concern a lot you know, from a lot of people. Let me take another sip here before I get into talking. Wet my throat real good, bear with me. Man, that is good. Yeah. As I was saying, um, I get a lot of inquiries from people who have been listening to me. And I'm so thankful to the many of you who listen to me every week Man, it's just, you know, somebody said to me, Doc, you have no idea how many people out there are hearing your message. And that's true. I really don't. I have no idea how many people are hearing this message every week. I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be able to get the message out. You know, and I'm thankful for those of you who are helping me to get it out. You know, uh, well, those who have been listening to me from a Pentecostal background, some many have been writing in, okay, with concerns about uh, the foundation of their claim as a Pentecostal. But before getting into that, let's lay the foundation here. Uh, as you see here, I always start my teachings off with this illustration. Let's follow it. Let's go through it together. Notice what it says. I usually have my students to make a circle with their hands like this. If you can't, if they don't have the illustration, but since you have the illustration, you can just read it. Okay. And notice what it says. The space inside this circle represents my realm of knowledge. All that I think I know about whatever I think I know is depicted right here within this circle. I must keep in mind that there is more to know than what is within the circumference of my awareness. Do you get that? All right, I start all of my teachings off like that because as a teacher, 
It's my job to say information that you do not already know. If I'm only saying what you already know, then I'm not teaching you anything. I'll never forget, I, I attended a funeral. Uh, I didn't eulogize this funeral, but I, I was in attendance to this funeral of a young person who had gotten shot and killed in my hometown. And the minister, uh, I mean, all these young people, man, that was at this funeral, what perfect opportunity okay, to drop some information on these young people that would make them think. And what did this preacher get up and do? The Bible says in Psalm the 23rd, 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to do what y'all. And everybody said, lie down a green pastures. He leadeth me beside what? Everybody still waters. He does what, y'all? He restores my soul. And the whole congregation recited the message, which means they didn't learn anything. You know, I was so upset that day, man, because what, a, what an opportunity was wasted to drop some serious information on these young people to cause them to think and change their ways. And what did he do? He came and recited something that they had learned when they were four and five years old. Brothers and sisters, I have to say what you do not already know, or I'm not teaching you anything. You understand? That's how this goes, okay? Why do I teach? Well, here it is. The reason why I, I minister, the reason why I teach, or, or, or stand up and, and explain to people what I'm trying to explain, the whole reason why I do that is to begin the process of undoing or reversing ideas and concepts that have been programmed into the minds of our people by the religious statements and church doctrines that have caused us to adopt a belief system that has resulted in our loss of contact with what is real, our loss of contact with what is factual, our loss of contact with what is historical, but most of all, our loss of contact with what is spiritual. This is why I teach brothers and sisters. I got to begin to, I got to reverse the process that's got us messed up, okay? I have to. And for those of you who are religious leaders, always keep this in mind too. And I understand why many of you cannot tell the truth, all right? For those of you who are not religious leaders, but you're sitting under religious leaders who are not telling you the truth, here's why they're not telling you the truth. Remember this. When you've told so many lies over the centuries that telling the truth about one of your early foundational lies and all the lies that have been defensively piled on top of it, if you want to keep your power, then you must continue to lie. When your control and power over another person's reality is based on the lies about who you are and what they are, you can never tell the truth, okay? So those of you who are sitting in a lot of the mega churches out there who are constantly hearing the, the lie, understand you can't hear the truth there. You just can't, okay? They've gained too much by preaching the lie. Okay, continuing on. Today, I want to talk to you from this subject. What they want us to believe about the day of Pentecost and speaking in tongues. What they want us to believe about the day of Pentecost and speaking in tongues. Now, why do I want to talk about this subject? Well, the reason why I want to talk about this subject in particular is because there's so many people who has who have been made to feel that they're not a part of God's program. They've been made to feel that God doesn't care about them. They've been made to feel left out because they're not having encounters and experiences during the church service like others are having. And the number one encounter that I hear questions about is speaking in tongues. 
Doc, how do I speak in tongues? What's wrong with me that I have not spoken in tongues? You'd be surprised, brothers and sisters, how many people have, are really disturbed by this. Okay? Um, and again, they're made to feel left out because they're attending a mega church, okay, where you have all of these people who are going through this physical expression. And this individual doesn't understand why am I not going through it too? Doesn't God love me? I'm asking God to bless me like I see him blessing everybody else and it's not happening. This is this is the kind of questions and email that I'm getting from people. Well, let me comfort you to the best of my ability today. Okay? Uh, be grateful that you are not following the crowd. Be grateful that you are not engaging, okay? And uh, you may want to call it a mass pandemonium. Be grateful that you're not participating in group unintelligible utterances, okay? And I'm going to show you today how in the Bible, they have really just misappropriated Bible verses, okay, to justify their behavior of what is called speaking in tongues or being Pentecostal. Of course, what I'm getting ready to address is actually the foundation of a, a major section of the Christian movement called the Pentecostal Church. Why is it called the Pentecostal Church? Because they believe in reenacting, and notice how I'm saying this, they believe in reenacting a phenomena that took place or supposedly took place on the day of Pentecost, according to what's written in the second chapter of Acts in the Bible. All right, so let's go there for our teaching for today uh, to break this down. OK, let's go put this back up on the screen here. All right. And what I want to do today is just show you how the Bible verses and the misinterpretation of Bible verses have people messed up and engaging in practices that lead to emotional, psychological, and spiritual deception. For those in the Pentecostal church, okay, they believe in what is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You understand? And this supposedly is justified in Acts, the second chapter, verse, the second chapter of Acts, Acts 2 and 38. And I didn't think to put it here. Uh, and I, there'd probably be others that I didn't think to put here either because I'm answering a question off of the cuff, pretty much. But Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right? So Pentecostals believe that you get this gift called the Holy Ghost. Let's break out, let's break out and break down how they come up with this. All right. Let's start with Mark, the 16th chapter, the 17th verse. Notice what it says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. All right. Now, before going any further, I taught on this before on what is an interpolation, okay? If you look at the book of Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 9 through 20, in your Bible, there would be a notation there if you have a good study Bible, and it will tell you that verses 9 through 20 of the 16th chapter of Mark 
were not in the earliest manuscripts, which means that verses 9 through 20, which, of course, this verse that we just read is a part of that. Verses 9 through 20 are in what's called an interpolation. I-N-T-E-R-P-O-L-A-T-I-O-N, interpolation, which means it was added into the Bible for the purpose of altering the text. This verse is a part of the interpolation. Okay? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And the verse goes on to say, uh, the passage goes on to say, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall pick up serpents and, and shall not die. You know, all this kind of stuff. Well, these are the verses that have so many people messed up. People actually dying from snake bites because of this passage of scripture. Okay, people actually dying from drinking poison because they're putting this passage of scripture to the test. Well, it's amazing, brothers and sisters, how we look for spectacularism. Follow what I'm saying here, okay? We look for spectacularism, excuse me. Man, that's so good. I'll probably be doing that quite a few times while teaching here, okay? We look for spectacularism. A very good friend of mine who's passed away now, uh, we were in the same church years ago, and when his eyes came open, which his eyes came open even long before mine, when he started having me, he started me to listening to Malcolm X. The first message he had me listen to was the ballad or the bullet, you know? And I said to them then, I said, I said, I said, I said, man, you you okay, brother? And he I, he I could tell he was he was in transition back then, you know, and uh, but he's he's passed away now. And um, he used to call what goes on in the Pentecostal church sanctified show business. That's how he described it, you know. Ain't nothing but sanctified show business. He used to get upset, man, you know. And he was a preacher too, right? And he would share that in his messages, you know. I miss my brother, Brother Acreage. Yeah, good man. Back to the point here about speaking in tongues. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. Let's do something here that's very important before proceeding. And let's get some definition, all right? One of the mistakes that we make, brothers and sisters, when it comes to the Bible is we make the mistake of applying uh, the English vocabulary, Webster's definitions to biblical words. Nothing can be more misleading or detrimental to your understanding than to apply the English meaning of words in the Bible. All right. For example, the word tongue in the Bible comes from different words. For example, the word glossa, okay, is where we get our word glossary from. And they shall speak with new tongues. All right. Or the word dialectos is where we get our word dialect from. However, both Greek words translate into the English word tongue. Understand, all right? So now it's a matter of knowing which word is used in which verse. And again, this is why I encourage you to make use of what is called the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. All right, now I'm talking to those of you who are serious Bible students now, or those of you who want to know what they're it's saying when they try to explain the Bible, okay? And, 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 and those of you out there who are trying to explain the Bible, but yet you don't do church, you don't, you, de you have never done church, okay? Uh, I understand and appreciate what you're trying to do, but some of you are doing more harm than good, all right? Because you don't know what you're talking about, because you're not you're not 
trained in Bible, you know, and not only do you not go to church, you don't know anything about the Bible at all, hardly. OK, so that's why I'm encouraging if you're going to try to use the Bible. All right. To, to try to explain the Bible, at least get the proper uh, source, the proper resource to help you explain biblical terms and as they properly are. And that's, again, the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. You don't have to go buy one. You can download it right online. OK. All right here. And I'm getting a note, Brother Kwame, that the internet connection is being uh, interrupted here. All right, I don't see that on my end. I hope it's not on your end, Brother. I hope, it, hope it's not uh, on my end. I look like I'm still connected so far. Okay. Uh, but as I was saying, you know, a lot of our people... And let me say this on, let me just go here and say this. A lot of our people, a lot of our people are so bound to the Bible. Okay. It's, it's almost like back to the concept of until all of our people are free, none of our people are free. That kind of thing. That's, that's kind of how I feel, you know? So, because so many of our people are still Bible bound in order to free their African minds and get them to return to our African story, to Sankofa, I have to, you, I have to go into the very book that they're imprisoned to and show them why they have misconceptions and show them their misconceptions, okay? I have to go into their book to show them that because they're not going to receive it from anything else because the Bible is their final court of appeal, okay? For those of you out there who've been set free and delivered from that book, great, wonderful. But there are millions of our people who still have not been, okay? And so that's why I spend a lot of my time trying to free our people from that that last bond of slavery, as I taught a few weeks ago, breaking the last bond of slavery, which is what? The slave master's religion. And what's the one piece of literature that has people bound to it? The thing called the Biblios, the Bible, right? Okay. So understand my task here. Understand my job. Let's look here at, at Bible verses here. Let's go to Acts, the second chapter. Now, I'm not going to spend go through too many bible verses because to be honest with y'all as you might have heard me say a couple of weeks ago it's taken a lot of patience on my part to even have to go into something that i know is not true to free your african mind but i know that that's where you are So to come and get you, I have to come to where you are. And the analogy that I like to use is that of a lifeguard. Okay? When a person is drowning and this, they're crying, help me, help me, I'm, I can't swim, I can't swim, or they're water too deep for them. The lifeguard does not stand up on his stool and say, swim, come on, swim this way, swim this way, come on, swim on this way. No, that's not what the lifeguard does. Lifeguard's job is to jump into the very thing that the person is drowning in, right? Yeah, to go into the very thing that the person is drowning in and rescue them where they are. So that's my assignment, okay? To go into this book and free the minds of those of you who were Bible bound like I was. So for those of you who are in the Pentecostal church, let's go to the passage that I'm sure you are very familiar with. Okay, Acts, the second chapter, verses one through four. Now, before going any further, let me set the stage by saying to you, what we're about to read never historically took place. Let's, let's be clear about that. All right. But the reason why a lot of people are so structured here 
and 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 captivated here and imprisoned here is because people believe that this actually happened. So therefore, they see this as an historical event. Brothers and sisters, what we're about to read never happened in world history. Okay? Never happened. Keep that in mind. It never happened in world history. Look at this verse carefully. Acts, the second chapter, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, who was all with one accord in one place? The Galilean Hebrews or the Galilean Jews who had followed, supposedly, Jesus. Now, that didn't happen either. Why? Because we know that Jesus didn't exist. But for those of you who believe that he did, for those of you who think that what we read in the Bible actually happened, let's go there. I'm going to go there with you. Okay? So all of these people who are supposedly following him, right? Well, you know, he told them that, you know, he was going to leave and that he was going to send what's called a comforter. And the comforter would lead and guide them into all truth. And so forth, and and after the after the crucifixion and the Passover and what have you, fifty days after the Passover is called Pentecost. Got me? Okay, so now we're talking here. What weeks? A couple of months almost after the so-called so-called crucifixion and all that kind of stuff and what would have happened on, on Calvary if it had actually happened in world history. But it didn't, right? So this is their story that we're reading. Keep that in mind. When the day of Pentecost was fully come or when it had finally arrived, okay, because that was a traditional thing, 50 days after the Passover was Pentecost, okay? When the day of Pentecost had come, they, the Galilean Jews, all right, which supposedly was 120 of them, were in what's called the upper room, right? I guess just talking and commemorating and discussing the things about this so-called Jesus and everything, whatever, right? We don't know what they were talking about because it really doesn't tell us. But notice the second verse says, whatever was going on in the upper room, and suddenly... Out of nowhere, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Now, notice I have that underscored. I have it underscored on purpose because it says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. In other words, here I want you to see this in your mind now. Put yourself in this scene, all right, and understand why this doesn't happen today. Put yourself in this upper room, in your imagination, with these other 120 people. And y'all are just sitting around talking about the goodness of God or whatever. And then all of a sudden, it gets very windy in the room. I mean, wind starts blowing, right? And you wonder, where is this wind coming from? I mean, it's like, that's what this is saying here. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Let me correct what I just said. Not a rushing mighty wind. It didn't get real windy in the room. According to the text, it sounded like wind in the room. Okay? Follow what I'm saying. It says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It didn't say a rushing mighty wind came into the room, all right? What sounded like a hurricane, which sounded like a windstorm, suddenly came into the room out of nowhere, right? Put yourself in this setting. That's the first phenomenon. The second thing that happened, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, Second phenomena, and there appeared unto them, 
cloven tongues like as of fire. It appeared unto who? The 120 Galilean Hebrews that were there in the upper room. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Okay, notice what it says carefully. It didn't say that there were actually flames of fire. It said there appeared unto them what looked like flames of fire. Okay, and it sat upon each of them. So it looked like flames of fire was on everybody's head. Was an actual fire on everybody's head. Notice what it says. It says, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. So that's the second phenomena that took place on this day of Pentecost. And the third phenomena that took place is they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Because of this fourth verse, fourth verse right there alone, right? I told you that tea is good, man. Oh, it's so good. Because of the fourth verse right there, we actually have what's called a denomination in Christendom called Pentecostalism. Pentecostalism. All because of this fourth verse or this passage that we just read. Acts 2 verses 1 through 4. Okay, this passage has become the explanation for why people do what they do in the Pentecostal church. This passage has become the, the example, the platform, the basis of what is called the Pentecostal movement, where they practice speaking in tongues. Notice what, notice what I said. They practice speaking in tongues. All right, now the Pentecostal church does not practice hearing the sound of a rushing mighty wind. They don't sit and they don't they don't wait and hear for a, a, a windstorm. <laughs> okay. The Pentecostal church does not practice seeing what looks like cloven tongues of fire sitting on everybody's head. They don't practice that. But they do practice the speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. And not only do they practice it, they brag about it when they testify, okay? And truly, I do speak in tongues as the Spirit, you know how to say it? I am, I am saved, sanctified, baptized, and filled with the mighty precious gift of the Holy Ghost and that with a burning fire and truly I, I can't, even, can't even rattle off like I used to, right? And, and truly I do speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Why is there a need to even say that? If you speak in tongues, I'm sure people hear you. Okay? So why is there a need for you to say I speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance? Or is that your way of giving license and acceptance to your phenomena of speaking in tongues because you're telling people that the spirit is giving utterance. So you're telling people that this is the Holy, what you're doing is coming from the Holy Ghost or you believe that what you're doing is coming from the Holy Ghost. Well, let's look at the passage here. Let's examine it very, very well because what happens to most of our people, they stop at the end of the fourth verse. Okay? So what has happened here is what I call segmented biblical attention. One of the most dangerous things that you can do is 
practice segmented biblical attention. What is segmented biblical attention? Segmented biblical attention is when you take a segment of scripture and use it to build a platform or a basis for a, a denomination or a doctrine upon. This is what has been done with this passage here. Okay, so now, historically speaking, someone had an encounter. And what they did is when they had their encounter, they turned to the Bible to find something to bear witness to their encounter. So instead of letting their encounter fit the Bible, follow how I'm saying this, right? Instead of letting their encounter or their experience match what the Bible is saying, they have twisted the Bible to match their encounter. Let me break down what I'm saying to you. And, and the passage that we're going to look at, this, this whole phenomena of speaking in tongues is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Let's read this passage again before proceeding so you can get the basis of what I'm saying. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. All right. So, and I've heard and I used to preach this before the, before the Holy Ghost can come upon you. First of all, we got to get on one accord. We're, we're too divided. We got to get on one accord. When Once we get on one accord, then, then the Holy Ghost can come upon us. You know, I used to preach that, man, because this is what happens here. This, this, the Holy Ghost couldn't come until they were all with one accord, as it says here. That's what it says, right? So that's what we preach. Okay, then after they got on one accord, they heard a loud noise. And then they appeared unto them what looked like flames of fire and sat on everybody's head. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. See, get it? See, we preach that. So now we think that that because what we think that we because we think that that's what happened. We think that that is supposed to be what is supposed to happen. Follow what I'm saying? Because we think that's what happened, we think that's what's supposed to happen. All right? But let me tell y'all, that's not what happened. All right? <laughs> that's not what happened. That's not what happened. Let's break it down for you. See, that's the problem. Segment to biblical, biblical attention. You read a segment of the passage and you stop right there. Well, let's read the fifth verse and see what it says. The fifth verse says, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Okay, now we got a situation here that we don't have in today's settings in churches. The fifth verse tells us that on this particular day, there was something going on. Okay, this was a day of festival. It was a very special day, an annual day of celebration called Passover. I'm sorry, Pentecost. So on this day, people from other countries were in Jerusalem at this time. Now, of course, again, none of this actually happened. So even though I'm, I'm breaking this down to you, I'm breaking this down to you to explain what happened in their passage, in their story. Okay? It's crazy, man, because knowing that it never historically happened is like, why am I even wasting precious time trying to explain this? But I, I again, I have to go to the level of the person I'm trying to free. Understand this, okay? So to those who believe that this happened, let me explain it to you on your level of understanding. 
there would, based on what we're reading, there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. At this time, there were other nationalities present. Keep this in mind. There were other nationalities present in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Follow this. Sixth verse. Now, when this was noised abroad, when what was noised abroad? When this phenomena was noised abroad, that these 120 Galilean Jews were speaking in glossa, lelia, or communicating in dialectos, or using a glossa, right? Glossa again, where we get our word glossary from, or a language. Got me? They were speaking to other languages. And it says, when this was noised abroad, when this was noised abroad, that these 120 Galilean Hebrews were speaking in other languages or speaking in tongues or speaking in other dialectos or communicating with other language speaking people. It says the multitude came together and were confounded because, understand this very well, every man heard them speak in his own language. Y'all out there who members of the Pentecostal church, or those of you who have written in about this, or you're concerned about the fact that you're not, or you haven't spoken in tongues, understand you, you, you don't fit this scenario. You don't fit this setting. And it's so important to understand this. Okay, here it clearly says, Every man heard them speak in his own language, in his own dialect. Seventh verse. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, here it is, y'all. They're telling, they're saying it right here. Are not all these which speak Galileans? Okay, the multitude have come together and saying, okay, what's going on here? I'm, I'm, I hear these Galilean Hebrews. And notice what the eighth verse says. How hear we every man in our own tongue or our own glossa or our own dialectos wherein we were born. Now, the reason why y'all, the Pentecostal church exists is because they never read this far. <laughs> they stopped at the end of the fourth verse and turned it into a denomination. The setting is altogether different here. Once again, notice the setting. Here we have 120 Galilean Hebrews that were in the upper room who were empowered by the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. That's what it meant here to be filled with the Holy Ghost, right? Has nothing to do with some kind of a liquid concept of, of over bubbling and you just get over, you know, start speaking in some you get overfilled with like liquid theology. No, it's not liquid theology at all. No, it means simply to be filled means to be empowered by. They were empowered by the spirit of God to go out and talk about God's goodness. Okay. And that's what it says. They went out into the square talking about God's goodness, but there were, other language speaking people in Jerusalem at the time. How do you know that, Brother Ray? Because the passage goes on to tell us in the ninth verse here. The ninth verse says people, Parthians were there, Medes were there, Elamites were there, 
People from Mesopotamia was there. People from Judea was there. People from Cappadocia was there. People in Pont from Pontus was there. People from Asia was there. People from Phrygia was there. People from Pamphylia was there. People from Egypt was there. People from Libya was there. People from Crete was there. People from Arabia was there. Get the picture? All of these different nationalities were in Jerusalem at the same time. And you would have known that Pentecostals if y'all had continued to read this passage and, and didn't stop at the end of the fourth verse and turn this into a religion of speaking in tongues. No, they weren't speaking in unintelligible utterances like what goes on in churches today. Okay, see what goes on in churches today is is they they you know you want to you want to repeat you want to replicate what happened what you think happened. Notice how I said that you want to replicate what you think happened on the day of Pentecost. That's what they want you to believe happened on the day of Pentecost. Okay, so they wrote in this story that this took place. Okay, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together one accord in one place. And suddenly they came from sound from heaven as a rushing man. And they wrote this as their story, and you believe it. So when a group of people got together and they called it Azusa Street Mission, and they had a phenomenal encounter of some kind, what did you guys do? You went to the Bible to find something like what happened on in, a, in California at Azusa. Okay? Wrong move, man. Wrong move. Wrong move is to go to the Bible to find an explanation of what happened at Azusa. Because what happened in their story on the day of Pentecost is nothing like what happened at Azusa, at the Azusa Street Mission. Even though y'all are trying to use this passage to justify it. Why do you say that, Brother Ray? I say it because at the Azusa Street Mission, everybody spoke English. It was all English-speaking people there. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. It happened in California, and everybody spoke English. Everybody came together on the invitation of English. Got what I'm saying? And they proceeded to have their story, their, their, their service, and their celebration, and the, the preaching went forth, the singing went forth, whatever, in English at the Azusa Street Mission. Okay? There's no record that they heard a sound of a rushing mighty wind at Azusa. There's no record that it, at Azusa there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon everybody. Okay? But they did have this experience of unintelligible utterances. All that kind of stuff, right? You know, yeah, I grew up in the Pentecostal church, people. It's very easy to do. Very easy to do, especially if you've been, if you grew up with it. I shunned it. I mean, you know, it's easy, very, you know, and to get that jerking, to get that quick, they call it the quickening, right? Because and they, they call it that because you're moving fast. And they call it the quickening, right? And actually the word quickening only means made alive, okay? And they take that from the Bible too in Ephesians. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians, the second chapter. But of course, we apply, We again, we look into the Bible to try to find something to explain what we just happened, what just happened to us. So with something, when we do that, you know, we get that, that jerk like that, you know, and again, I was, we were, share, I was sharing with a friend the other day about why is it that when people get happy in church, they always jump backwards, you know, they, they never jump forward, right? They, when they get happy in church, it's always a, you know, it's a, 
like like something hit them. You know, they they never they never jump forward at you. They always mm, 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 like they got hit. You know, so w- w- what's up with that? You know, again, that's that's we we learn that by osmosis. We see people go through that. You know, uh, we see people in church when they're singing a song. You know, for example, uh, I used to tell my my vocal students, all right, you guys are messing up because you're trying to replicate what you see going on in church. You sing like you're in pain. You know, so we get that uh, that painful face. And, oh, I mean, come on. What's the purpose of that, man? You know, I used to tell people, look at look at Luther Vandross. OK, if you want an example on how to sing. Luther don't Luther don't do that. Luther smiles at his audience while he's singing. That's why they be that's why they're crazy about him. He don't look like he's in pain. You know, y'all look like you've been like you what a friend we have in Jesus. Come on, people. <laughs> Let's woo, man. You see what I'm saying? You know, we 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 adopt practices because that's what we see going on in the church. Okay, such as speaking in tongues, you know, and people think that that's a sign that you got the Holy Ghost. No, that's a sign here that you're talking about the wonderful works of God according to this passage. Right? So let's look at what it goes on to say. Oh, I, I'm out of the verses there. I'm already, okay, I'm a fan, I'm ending already. So let, let me make sure that you guys can understand this. Here we have what happened on the day of Pentecost. Again, now mind you, it did not happen in history. But to explain to you Bible believers what happened, and you, you see it here, okay? On the day of Pentecost, these 120 Galilean Hebrews had an experience. Let's go back and see what that experience was. Suddenly, it came a sound from heaven as a, as a rushing mighty wind. Now, mind you, it says where they were sitting, right? Now, see, when I grew up, we weren't sitting. We were tarrying for the Holy Ghost. You got me? They had me on my knees calling on Jesus, 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 and clapping my hands and saying Jesus, 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 to the point where I wasn't even saying Jesus anymore. I was saying Jesus, 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 and because I wasn't swallowing my saliva and it was accumulating in my mouth, okay, it's the the saliva in my mouth started coming between my teeth like a like an egg beater okay so now the air beating the saliva being starting to so this foam is coming out of my mouth and they're saying look at god purging him god is purging him that's the sin oh boy do we operate in ignorance or what look at sin coming out of him no that wasn't sin that was foam from the saliva in my mouth that I wasn't getting a chance to swallow because y'all ain't giving me a chance to swallow because y'all are saying, call on him, call on him, call on him like you mean it, call on him. I'm down, G, 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 I'm not even saying Jesus. I'm saying G, 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 G. Yeah. You know, some of you listening to me right now, you can relate to what I'm saying because you went through that same experience. Right? Yeah. But because people are looking to replicate what they found happened in the Bible, they turn to this to justify what happened at the Azusa Street Mission. But the difference is at the Azusa Street Mission, okay, there weren't people from every nation under the heavens. All right. The people at the Azusa Street Mission were Americans. All right. Folk right here, English-speaking people, who understood what was going on in the room, who understood what was being said. The people here on the day of Pentecost, okay? Uh, uh, how could they understand what was being said? All right? How can the people from Parthia understand Galilean Hebrew? 
How did the people could from me to understand Galilean Hebrew? How did people from Elam understand Galilean Hebrew? How did the people from Mesopotamia understand Galilean Hebrew? All right, they, they spoke their own language. Understand this, right? All of these languages speaking people were there in Jerusalem at this time. And it clearly says at the end of the 11th verse, we do hear them speak in our tongues. In other words, all of these language speaking people are saying all of us hear these 120 speaking Hebrews in our tongue wherein we were born. So the miracle of Pentecost was not that they were speaking in some unintelligible utterance like what goes on in our churches today. Understand this, okay? It's not like sitting in church like we're doing today and, and something comes upon you and it's No, that's not what happened. What happened is they went out from where they were, first of all, all right? They were in the upper room. They didn't stay in the upper room, right? What, what's the sense of staying in the upper room talking about the wonderful works of God when the purpose of your mission right now is to tell others about the wonderful works of God, right? So that number one, they left where they were. So they weren't in the same room preaching to each other. All right. They went out into the marketplace. And that's the only way all of these people from other nationalities could hear them. Got me? So the miracle here is the, the brother from Judea, okay, heard the man from Galilee, from Galilee speaking the wonderful works of God in his dialect. Now, the phenomenal thing is another person from Egypt, from the other man from Egypt heard the same Galilean talking about the wonderful works of God in Egyptian. Got me? Okay. The same man, let's say uh, the same brother who heard them speaking, who heard, uh, let's say, who heard Peter, all right, uh, heard Peter in the language of the Cappadocians, all right? Another person had heard Peter in the language of the Mesopotamian. But Peter was speaking in Galilean Hebrew. I want to be sure that y'all get this. In other words, the, nothing. there's nothing in the text, in other words, that would lead us to think or believe that the 120 Galilean Hebrews knew or thought that they were speaking in a language other than the language that they normally spoke in. Follow me, okay? So when it says they spoke with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, there's nothing in the text that says that the Spirit changed their language. There's nothing in the text to suggest that. All right, that would have blown their minds. Understand what's going on here. There's nothing in the text to suggest that Peter knew that he was speaking in Egyptian or that Peter thought he was speaking in Cappadocian. The text clearly explains to us that Peter, John, the disciples, whoever was there, simply went out talking about the wonderful works of God in their own language. But the people from other nations heard the Galilean Hebrews in their native tongue wherein they were born. Doesn't it say that? Uh, and the, at the end of the eighth verse, and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Notice what the seventh verse says. Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? 
Imagine the, 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 the people from the different nationalities there. They were amazed. Are not all these speaking Galileans? How hear we everybody in our, we're in our hometown language, man? That's the miracle. So the miracle of Pentecost was not in the tongue of the speaker. Like you Pentecostals want to brag about. And truly, I do speak in tongues as the spirit give utterance. That's not what went on on day of Pentecost. Peter did not have the right to brag about, truly, I do speak in tongues as the Spirit gave me. I, I speak in all these tongues. No. Peter, James, and John, the apostles, they weren't bragging about speaking in tongues. They were simply going, talking about how wonderful God is. I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to be sure you guys are getting this. They simply went out into the square talking about the wonderful works of God, as you see there at the bottom of the 11th verse. The phenomena was that the people from other nationalities heard the Galileans in their dialect. So the miracle of Pentecost was not in the, not in the tongue of the speaker, but in the eardrum of the hearer. So, brothers and sisters, if we would simply apply the truth of this passage alone, now there are other verses that relate to speaking in tongues, but not to the, what happened on the day of Pentecost. The other passages simply have referred to one's ability to be able to speak in different languages, and that's called the gift of speaking in tongues. What happened on their Pentecost is not the gift of tongues. Okay, the gift of tongues is recorded in the book of Corinthians. And what happened is people have taken the two phenomena and connected them together of glossa, glossalalia, dialectos, and wrapped it all as one and created a doctrine out of it. They have nothing to do with each other. What goes on in Corinthians, as far as tongue speaking, has nothing to do with what's going on in Book of Acts. The Book of Acts is the foundation of what the Pentecostal Church stakes its claim on because of what happened on the day of Pentecost. That's why it's called the Pentecostal Church. However, what they're doing in the Pentecostal church today is not what happened on the day of Pentecost. And I hope I, I, hope, I hope I made that clear to you. Okay. So now the next question is, so what are they doing in church today? What are they doing? Okay. Huh. A phenomena that could have any variables of, of explanations to it. What I do know is what's going on in Pentecostal church today is not what went on in the Bible. So if you're using what went on in the Bible as your platform to justify the activity that goes on in the Pentecostal church, then that platform goes without argument. You can't justify it because this passage is not applicable in today's situation. You know why? Because everybody in the congregation speaks English. If you got an English-speaking congregation, everybody speaks English, there's no need for speaking with other languages as they did on the day of Pentecost. And that's what speaking with other languages means. They communicated with other languages. And they began speaking with other tongues meaning they, they began speaking with other languages or other like other dialects as the spirit enabled them to speak. That's all it means. All right. So stop being so puffed up. All right. I know, I know Pentecostal folk. I know y'all think y'all uh, got a special favor with God. You know, I know you do, but the truth of the matter is y'all are engaging in a practice that is a deception. I know you feel good because you're engaging in it. You feel good when you do it. 
You know, you, it, some of y'all feel good. You meet, you actually feel empowered when you do that. You feel empowered when you're saying what you don't even know and you don't understand what you're saying, but you feel good about it. That's I, I can deal with that too. Maybe next week. Okay. You feel good about not knowing what you're saying. Think about that. You feel good about not knowing what you're saying. There's a certain sense of empowerment to that. <laughs> and you feel good about it. You feel good about the phenomena that you don't understand, that you can't explain, that you can't interpret. Ah, oh, man. Okay, y'all. For those of you out there who've been disillusioned and thinking that, into thinking that God does not love you or God does not want to bless you because you haven't spoken in tongues like others have, you know, uh, I've actually attended churches where a pastor said, everybody's speaking your prayer language. And the entire congregation just starts. Some people just, you know, and, 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 and they start going into a frenzy. That is not justified with scripture at all. There's nothing in the Bible to justify that behavior. Nothing. All right. That is not what happened on Day of Pentecost. No. Okay. Nobody stood up on Day of Pentecost and said, everybody speak in a prayer language. No. That's not what happened. Okay. All right, brothers and sisters. I like freeing people who've been disillusioned. And I hope I got a chance to do that today. All right. Yeah, buddy. Okay. We're inviting you to support us with your tax deductible contributions. Okay. Uh, you can support us if you want to make your donation through PayPal. Our PayPal address is African Village One, as you see there on the screen at AOL.com. If you want to make your donation to us uh, through Cash App, our donation address is cash tag. That's the dollar sign, Dr. Ray Hagens. If you wish to make a donation to support us through Zelle, our donation address is my email address, rayhagens at gmail.com. Okay. We thank you for your continued support. You know, um, it's helping us to continue to reach the masses. That's right. Your your donation. You may you say, well, I don't have that much to give, brother Ray. You know, whether brothers and sisters, whether you're donating a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars, I thank you for your donation. You know, if you can't give any more than you give, then so be it. All right. You never. You will never hear me say. God told me that there are uh, 1,000 people right now that got $100. You'll never hear me say no stuff like that, all right? Because I don't, I, I just don't hold to that, that practice. That, that's financial exploitation. I don't do that. I don't do that, okay? I believe that the Most High God can speak in your spirit to lead you to how much you should donate. However much you donate, Again, I'm thankful for it, and I pray that the Most High God blesses whatever you have left and multiply it to meet whatever need you have. Okay, that's what I that's my prayer that based on how you give, that God would bless you. All right, does that make sense? That's the law of reciprocity. All right, if you give, if you give stingy. Then you get back stingy. However you reap, that's how you sow. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Oh, brothers and sisters, thank you so much for your donations. Thank you so much. You, those who are sending you, as it goes. Wow, man. PayPal donations, go, things going off already. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for y'all something else. Okay. 
Also, you're invited to log on and listen to uh, our 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week webcast. That's right. You can hear me teaching 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Just go to WBLR.com or TheAfricanVillage.org or DrRayHagans.com. Okay, all three addresses take you to the website. And you can just click the play arrow and listen to me teaching. The website still is not, is not, hasn't been published yet. It's still being uploaded, but it hasn't been published yet. Okay, which means it's seen all of the pictures and all of the announcements and all that kind of stuff. Only thing that's really running right now is the broadcast itself. So you can go to the site and just click the play arrow and listen and learn. All right, do that. Also, brothers and sisters, you know, uh, I cannot leave you guys without talking about one of the greatest organizations I've been blessed to be a part of, and that's the Black Achievement Fund. Okay? Uh, yeah. Black Achievement Fund. Come on and be a part of us. To those of you who have joined within the last week, thank you for becoming a part of the Black Achievement Fund. Okay, I didn't get to send a personal email to those who are, who joined on this past week as of yet. I'm going to send it to you. But those who have joined, thank you for joining me there in the Black Achievement Fund. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. $9 a month. Come on and be a part of our experience. Okay. Uh, we're doing some great things and we're excited about it. You know, and I'm excited about it. And we ain't playing. That's the thing that's so heavy. We're not playing, y'all. Okay? We're about the work of African liberation and empowerment. Come on and join us and be a part of what we're doing. Okay? And I want to say today a very special congratulations to our brother, our key Hodges, the brother there with his fist raised in the air. Okay? Uh, on yesterday, I was honored to perform the wedding ceremony of he and his queen, all right, Sister Raven, uh, formerly Raven Stallings, now Raven Hodges. Okay, I was able to perform their wedding ceremony on yesterday, so we congratulate them, you know, on making that step into the state of what is called matrimony. Yeah, man. Yeah, buddy, I'm so proud of them, you know, proud of them. So brothers and sisters, come on and be a part of our experience in the Black Achievement Fund. In fact, we invite you to log on to baf.solutions and join. That's the website, not baf.org, baf.com, baf.net, none of that, baf.tv, none of that. baf.solutions. What a perfect... Uh, File extension solutions because that's what it this is. Our this is the solution, man, to our predicament, our economic empowerment. Okay, so come on and be a part of us. Yeah, come on and be a part of us. Join us today, don't delay. Yeah, baf.solutions. In fact, at two o'clock, you'll hear a presentation, two o'clock Eastern time, you'll hear a presentation by our president, Brother R. Key. Uh, sharing the vision of the Black Achievement Fund. All right, so I encourage you to log on at that time. Yeah, log on at that time, okay? Come on and be a part of us in the Black Achievement Fund. Brothers and sisters, I want to say thank you so very much. Uh, I, see, I see Victoria here wrote a note and I guess I need to say something about it too because I'm busy teaching so I don't get a chance to see uh, those who are uh, descendants in the room okay but I will be going back through the notes and that is brothers and sisters those of you who don't agree with what I say uh, you're entitled to disagree you're welcome to disagree all right you're just not welcome to distract in the chat room with your disagreement that you're not welcome to do. All right. We see that you disrespect the class. Uh, hey, man, well, then I'm going to have to just block you. Okay. So I'm going to go back through and read some of the comments. 
In order to see comments that were just that, you know, you weren't here to learn, then you won't have the privilege of being in the future classes to learn. That's how that goes. I'm here to teach, brothers and sisters. I'm not here to debate, dialogue, none of that. I'm here to teach. Okay? And I ask the Most High God to give me strength to heal my body to the point to swear as I can do just that. Okay? And Queen Yolanda, I just saw your text message. I'm doing absolutely wonderful, sis. As you can see, I'm doing black-tastic, magnificent, doing black-tacular. Okay? Yeah, I'm feeling good, doing good. And uh, what can I tell you? What can I tell you, you know? And I'll talk more about my, my physical state in another session, but I'll say this much on it now. And that is, and I've shared with several people uh, that what I got in my spirit a few weeks ago from the ancestors in the Most High was the physical challenge that I announced and went through, of course, with the kidneys and all that kind of stuff, was for the benefit of someone else. You know, like I'm a COVID survivor, right? And what did I have to do? I had to resort to natural remedies to heal myself, okay? Just like I had to resort to natural remedies to feel better. To heal. I, I'm in the process of healing myself now by taking natural remedies. You understand? Okay. Instead of pumping my body full of the synthetic medication that they want to give me. Okay. Uh, no, man. I'm doing it God's way. I'm taking what God has put here on this earth for the healing of our bodies, of our body temple. Okay. So, what I went through was to be an example to somebody else out there who's going through it. You understand? That's what this, and that's what I got in my spirit. So you can look at me and be encouraged that you can be strengthened. Okay. By understanding I'm doing good. <laughs> okay. And I say that not to be sarcastic or facetious. I'm doing good brothers and sisters. All right. You know, like I said, when I spoke to to my or did my follow up visit with my doctor uh, the past week, she looked at me and she said, you're doing so good. I'm, there's no way in the world I'm going to put you on dialysis. I said, OK, cool. She said, your, your kidney numbers are coming up and everything, you know, and I wanted to say well, it ain't from doing what y'all told me to do. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, so the. The my, my my sickness or my discomfort, how my dis ease was to be an example to someone else out there who's going through the same dis-ease, discomfort, this sickness to let you know that you can heal yourself. You understand? All right. Yeah. Okay. So that's my job to heal the sick and to be an example of how to heal the sick. Hope that made sense. Okay. Brothers and sisters, it's time for me to get ready to get out of here. Okay, and uh, let's uh, get my get the song up here. Uh, the African and me loves the African and you. When we come together, ain't nothing you can't do. You know why? Or nothing we can't do. You know why? Because you are easy to love. Yeah, man. So let's just let's pull up the song here. You're easy to love, and understand, family. I mur you. All right, which means. In English, I love you. The mer in me loves the mer in you. You understand? And hey, what can I tell you? When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. So let's do this. Yeah. I've enjoyed being with you guys today. Come on, let's sing it like we mean it. The African in me. Love the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can do. The African in me, love the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can do. You're easy. You're easy. You're so easy. 
love. Let's do it again. Come on. The African in me loves the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. The African in me loves the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're so easy. You're easy. Easy to love. Let's do this. The truth that's in me. Love the truth that's in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can do. The truth that's in me. Love the truth that's in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can do. You're easy. You're so easy. You're easy. Easy to love. Justice. Come on, everybody. Justice in me. Love justice in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. Justice in me. Love justice in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're easy. You are so easy. You're easy to love. Righteousness, everybody. The righteousness in me. Love the righteousness in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. Righteousness in me. Love the righteousness in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're so easy. Oh, yeah. You're easy. Easy to love. Let's close out with the African in me. The African in me. Love the African in you. African in me. Love the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're easy. Oh, yes. You're easy. Easy to love. Oh, you're easy to love. Oh, you're easy to love. Oh, my goodness. Yes, brothers and sisters. The African in me love the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. And know why? Because you're easy to love. Brothers and sisters, I've enjoyed being with you guys today. Thank you so very much for being with me. And uh, to those of you who are letting me know how good I look, uh, thank you for that. Thank you so very much. Hey, man, I feel good. I'm doing, not only do I look, you know, I have this saying, anybody can pass the look test, okay? But however I look, I feel 10 times better, okay? I feel 10 times better. And I hope that my uh, improvement, I hope that my, my empowerment has been an encouragement to somebody out there, okay, who's going through a physical challenge. Yeah. Yeah. The ancestors let me know. That's why I was going through what I was going through, okay? To let somebody out there know you can beat whatever you're going through. And you don't have to do it by them using iatrogenic medication to do it, okay? And for those who don't know, iatrogenic medication, iatrogenic medicine, I-O-T-R-A-G-E-N-I-C, iatrogenic medicine. Iatrogenic medicine is when doctors prescribe medication for you that they know you're going to die from in the long run. Yep. Isn't that deep? Iatrogenic. Uh, and that's, again, that's spelled I-O-T-R-A-G-E-N-I-C. Okay. Either that or I 
O or either I A T R O G E N I C. Either A or O. I got it either backwards. Okay, but um, hey, man, I don't I don't follow. I listen to my spirit when it comes to my health. You know, I'll go to them and find out what does my lab work say. But I'm not I'm not going to let you victimize me by getting your kickbacks and all that kind of stuff right now. So I want to be that example to those of you out there, okay, who are going through whatever you're going through. All right, I, I mur you guys. Thank you for being with me today. And I'll see y'all on next week, okay? Everybody out there, stay strong. And remember, the African in me loves the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You know why? Because you're easy to love. Peace.